Does depend. Oh, on the other hand, oh, does depend upon rain or some other water to be a pond. If a pond is depend upon a particular spring underneath it for instance, all that is required for it not to be a pond is for someone to put bore well all around. The water table table will go down, the spring will go dry, and there will be no water in the pond. A pond can also cease to be a pond if too much water enters into it. If its banks are broken, there will be water everywhere. No one will know whether the pond is <coughs> unless they are wading into the water and suddenly step into it. Therefore, a pond will no longer, longer be called a pond if there is too much water entering into it or if no water enters into it at all. Such changes are possible for a pond, whereas an ocean undergoes no change whatsoever, regardless of whether water enters or does not enter. Please comment on this if you can. See if you can have any ideas. Is it, clear? Is it making it clear? Yeah. What is it clarifying? Comparison with the wise person and the, and the person who desires. Yeah. yeah. And the person who desires is what? The like thing, yeah, the desire. It, it's unwise. Yeah. Yes, remember that desires are what? Are wants. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then where do wants come? To feel No, no, where do they come? Where do they come from? Outside? From the mind. No, no. From, from within. Senses? Right? From what? From within. No, the, the, the desires come from sense. a mistaken mm. identity with a wanting yeah. being. Yeah. Isn't the body wanting? Yes. It's object-wise, limited. Time-wise, limited. Is that correct? Yeah. This body is not that body. That's object-wise, limited. And it's also time-wise, limited. This body used to be nice and cute, and look at what happened to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's only love you around. So the mind is the same way, and the senses are the same way. The senses are going, there's no more hearing. You have to have an you know, extra pair of eyes in order to be able to see. It's all one thing, isn't it? One thing means one thing. What? What are they wanting? They're wanting. They're, they're lacking. Lacking and want to complete. That's right. They're not complete. They're always wanting. I'm talking about the senses are wanting. You compare the the nose of a human being or the nose of a dog. This nose is wanting. Mm -hmm. Is that correct in that respect? So here, desires can come only from identifying with the wanting aspects of the personality. Every aspect of the personality is wanting. Is that correct? Therefore, if, if, if the, every aspect of the personality is wanting and I identify with it, then I am wanting. All right? Now, to want is a verb. <laughs> But I also make it a noun. What do I mean by that? What is it? The want is a verb, isn't it? Yes. But we make it a noun. How do, you, how do I mean that? Object, the desire. No, I make it a noun. Give me a noun. River is a noun. Okay, river is a noun, right? Okay. Pond is a noun. Good, you know, uh, what, excuse me? Pond is a noun. A pond is a noun, that's correct. Now, the person, a person is a noun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So therefore, I become a wanting person. In other words, I make me wanting. So I put a name on me as wanting. Not just wanting in the, in the verse sense, yeah. but I find myself lacking. I find myself inadequate. I find myself insufficient. This is, I, this is a label I put upon myself. It's no longer a verb. It becomes a noun. So I go about the face of the earth as a wanting being. 
Is that right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is I am just like the pond. I am so depending that it, there's, it doesn't rain too much or somebody doesn't bore some holes someplace and start taking the water from the spring that That's I'm getting right. it from. Uh -huh. <laughs> because they'll make me disappear. You know how? You know, let's suppose, for example, you know, somebody doesn't appreciate me. Now, I feel I'm pretty good. You know, I get this notion. My husband, my wife tells me I'm pretty good. My children tell me I'm pretty good. And then there is someone there that makes me feel not good enough. Okay, like that. Mm -hmm. That person is a threat. It's like somebody boring in siphoning off what makes me a me. <clears throat> and that is threatening as heck, isn't it? If someone threatens to minimize me, it is a heck of a scary thing. That is why sometimes it's very difficult to study a new, a new language or go into a whole new discipline of knowledge. Even uh, psychotherapy. You know psychotherapy? Let's suppose you, know, you and I go to psychotherapy. Then we have the psychotherapists come over. And then the children are there, and so on. And I thought I was a good father. <laughs> I thought I was a good friend. Now this fellow, this psychotherapist, becomes what? A tremendous threat because he's pointing fingers about me. <laughs> he said, if I'm paying the guy, I say, you know what, you're fired. <laughs> but if I'm not paying the fellow, and I have to be there because I require some certificate, man, I'll sweat all over the place. Every time I dread the moment to go in there. Why? Because he's siphoning away myself, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is that the right word to say? Siphoning away myself. Mm -hmm. It's like the guy drilling holes around the pond, taking away the source of the river, which is underground, that makes his pond to be. Beginning with Swiss cheese. There you go. So, the pond, you know, identifying with the pond, you know, the pond means identifying with the limited. I'll feel one thing. And I'll be in constant guard. I'll be walking on, on, on glass to make sure that I don't rub you the wrong way because then you rub me back the wrong way. And if I rub you the wrong way, it's for me to aggrandize myself because putting you down makes me feel good. feel good. Why? Because I'm afraid that I'm gonna minimize. <coughs> now, what happens then when I minimize myself? Minimize, you know what minimize means, right? Mm -hmm. I minimize myself. And I keep quiet about it, I don't say it. But in me, there is sense, this sense of worthlessness. What happens? I feel inadequate. Hmm? I feel... Depressed. Depression? Loaded down. Depression will come. And sometimes to the point of doing crazy things to be able to resolve it, mm -hmm. you know, to try to do things, to try to, and, but then I know I'm lying to myself all the time, I'm not good enough, they only knew, blah, blah, blah. so this mantra is going on in the mind. So you're carrying a tremendous load. Why? Because the identity is such that you're never good enough for yourself, always my applaud you, but you're never good enough for yourself. Because we compare each other to each other and all that. So therefore, you see, so that makes it even a compound of problem. And now, first I have this sense, we all have this sense of inadequacy. Not sufficient enough. But somehow we are able to, but if that thing becomes very strong in me, I can even commit suicide. Yes. Just uh, seven or four or five years back, I read that General MacArthur, supposed to be the mighty general for the U.S. Army mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody was thinking great about him, but he always compared himself with General uh, uh, Montgomery. Montgomery. Uh, and he was feeling really, really inadequate. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Despite everything that he had. That's right. So it's very difficult, you know. So where can you find a self? that will actually resolve my problem. If everything depends on somebody not siphoning off myself. I can't. I can't. 
if I, if I identify with the limitations of my body, my mind, the senses, my achievements and all that, they'll never be good enough. My God, always somebody will top them off, isn't it? So I need to find a self that I can be with and feel good with. And it's not a matter of just brainwashing myself because I've done that enough. You know, I bluff myself and I bluff the world. Is that right? I bluff myself and I bluff the world. So what, where do I find it? Do I have to go get it someplace? Mm -hmm. I have to actually start thinking. How come I want to be, how come I want to be satisfied? What is me? How come I'm not happy being miserable? How come I'm not happy just being mediocre? How come I'm, I'm not happy just being unhappy? Is that my limit? Is that, I mean, I'm limited. So how come I don't just uh, resolve myself that that's what I am, limited? Because it seems to be contrary to my nature. That's the whole idea. In me, there's something that rejects that. <coughs> and the funny part of it, excuse me? There's a media. Yeah, it's, all, it's, it's contrary to my nature, but I don't know it. And I think that adding this or taking away that, I will resolve it. Okay, and, uh, and, and if we think about it, it won't. It won't resolve because the, the dependency still be there. The pond still depends on either rain or the water from the bottom and make sure that no truck goes over me. <laughs> because the banks are gone and the water will be all over and then I'll disappear. That's a situation. So the teacher here is saying that the wise man has recognized himself to be complete. Is it like you were looking at stimulation from outside? Yeah. To stimulate you, yeah. yourself. Yeah. Right. We, we, we want the water to come from the outside that, that will keep me going as a pond. Or from the inside, you know, if it's a spring that I depend on. But the teacher is saying something different. He says, look, you can actually recognize who you are. In you, there is something that is saying that the limitations are unbearable because there is something foreign to you. Maybe the nature of yourself is to be complete. So you cannot, if the nature of yourself is complete, you cannot create it. You cannot create it. You cannot make it happen. You cannot will, will it. Maybe what you need to know, what you need is to know that it's true about you. Not as a concept, but somehow drop identity with the limited. And you know what will happen? You will discover that the limited is also you. But then you are not the limited. You will discover that the limited is also you, but you are not the limited. There's a difference in there. Is it, can you pick it up? Mm -hmm. The limited is also you. It's my fact. Nothing is away from you. There's no gap. There's no difference. Yeah. Now that is the only way. So the wise person found that out. The, the rain clouds depend on me, but they don't take or add anything to me. You know, the flow of the rivers doesn't add anything to me. They depend on me. <laughs> I don't depend on them. However, there I am, now manifested as rivers as clouds, no problem. But I, I cannot be, how do you call this? like the pond, I cannot be reduced, minimized by anything. So when someone is not happy or content with this wanting being, and wants to stop being wanting, is responding to a deep, deep pressure that comes from, from within. But then we interpret it that the uh, that a thing, a being, or a situation will complete me. And we don't know, we have, we have not really focused that maybe it is myself just claiming to manifest. That's, in other words, to become wise. In other words, to wake up to the, to the true, truth of myself. That's the whole idea. And that is difficult because you have to discern that. And you cannot come up with it by yourself. 
because the self that you are cannot be objectified. That's a big problem. So you need to have something, someone, that is able to help you see that. A pointer. Uh, a pointer, that's correct. <clears throat> so, yes, we have a thought. No. Okay. The yeah, no, only question. Yeah. The, the comment I have is, in, a, in the real world, you're always dealing with duality and then trying to drop it dual to non-dual. And the analogy of uh, the ocean and the upon and the river. Ocean is basically a large amount of water, which, which is by itself compared to... The, can we say the river is it's not self just because it's 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 not it's limited just because of we didn't compare to only river we only compare to ocean because it's I'm trying to understand the dual non dual vision and then the, the relationship put together here. Well, it's it's, it's not going to work because it's not the the the, the object of the an analogy is not for that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but there's one thing for sure. Now watch. <clears throat> Let's talk about the real world, quote unquote real. You know, our everyday experiences. Mm -hmm. I can walk with faith in it that somehow God is taking care of me, that's one. In the real world. And go out and follow through on whatever I do, or whatever situation I encounter. Or I can I can if if my mind is able to pick this knowledge and it somehow flows into my heart. No, to the degree that it does, then that will give me the strength to also to visit the world in a healthy way. Now, let's suppose I visit the world, I interact with the world in an unhealthy way. Okay, unhealthy means in a self-destructive or a not productive way, improductive way, let's just say that. Okay, then I can see that. I can see that. Let's suppose there's hang-ups on the past and all that that prevent me to do that. Okay, now you can also see that. I can try to work to get those knots out of the way. But I need to remember who I am. I need to remember who I am. Or, you know, what I mean in the, in the true sense of the world. Or, I need to seek God's help. This is where religion comes into the picture. The dual aspect. He said, yeah, but we're talking about non-dual. No, 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 here. You know, you require some help. And that is why prayer is so important. You see the idea how we pray at the beginning of the class? So you have either this knowledge to give you the vision so you remember who you are and just go forward with faith. Or, if not, if you're too agitated, just pray. Just pray. And trust and do what you can to the best of your ability and be careful not to beat yourself up because the the energy required is not being put forth. There's some hang ups. So those hang ups prevent you from really, you know, cultural whatever it is, you know, whatever happened to you when you were a child, or all this stuff is there. Don't let them let's say uh, put a label on you. Don't put a label on yourself. What could be done, done is. What couldn't be done has not been done yet. And maybe they'll never get done, no problem. But don't, let, don't punish yourself. Because what happens is that then that also is a, is, a, is a thing that holds you back. If your purpose is to be able to recognize who you really are, you know, to condemn yourself and to beat yourself up is not the best thing in the world. You, have to actually, you need that mind. And what are you beating up when you're beating up yourself? You're beating up the mind. Isn't it? And you, that mind you require. So you have to just observe it. And then be, you know, give it, a, uh, give it accommodation even for that. That doesn't mean you have to be complacent about things. But what do you expect? Uh, you know, look at this. Something was ingrained in the past. And there's a logic to it, to the way the mind reacts. 
Isn't it? There's a logic to it. It is not, it follows a reason. So, if something is there that you don't like, you don't have to like it. But somehow, if you want to do something about it, accept it. Accept it, meaning embrace it. Is embrace it means you mean garbage is coming out? They should. Well, let me tell you, if you fight with it, it's not the right thing. So see it, and now see how you now, you cannot change the past, and that's what's manifesting right now, but you can definitely change the future. How? By not, how do you say that, uh, perpetuating. Aggravating. Aggravating the situation. Okay. In other words, you need to start loving yourself. Now, but how can you love yourself if you identify with a self that is crappy? <laughs> it is my mess. And I, you know, and I, if it is there, it's because it's supposed to be there. You know, if there's something, or there's something that should be there, it's not there. That's another one. It is not there because it shouldn't be there. You want to put it there? Then start working on that. But don't label yourself by it. That's the whole idea. Because if we label ourselves by it, then we make things worse. We actually aggravate them. Mm -hmm. In the real world, that's how we should act. But then, and you continue, how you say, fostering this knowledge, this vision. And, and it is not very difficult. Look at this, please. It is not very difficult to see who you are. It's not very difficult. Look, please. There's been changes in the course of the years that we lived. And those changes took place when I was a child and I became a juvenile. I didn't end. Otherwise, a juvenile would have no memory of the child days, isn't it? So childhood ended and juvenile came, but then I was experiencing the child time and I'm experiencing the juvenile time, isn't it? I didn't end. Then juvenile time came, teenage came, and then adulthood came. And when adulthood came, there was not a new you. There was a new mind, possibly, a new size of the body, new development, biological, and all that stuff. But you are the remaining thing. Everything changed, but you didn't change. Now, you know, maturity comes. And you are the same one that was there all the time. So who you are is, you know, independent of all those things is true. Is that right? Is there another you that went through all those? No. Now, and when you say, I changed, okay, who changed? Physically, you might have changed. Sense-wise, you might have changed. Emotionally-wise, you might have changed. Value-wise, you might have changed. Is that right? However, how do you know you changed? How do you know you changed? <laughs> How do you know you changed? The subject you. Yeah, huh? The awareness. That's right. You're aware of it, isn't it? That I that is aware of it went and saw all the changes, good and bad. That awareness is there. That awareness is you. That is something that before I didn't know. That is knowledge. <laughs> that is knowledge. And that awareness is called the Shaitanya. The me that knows, Chit. the one that gives the stuff for this body and this mind and everything. And that is a presence. You were present in youth, childhood, adulthood, old age, in the good and the bad, you were present. This presence, Sat. And then while those were limited, there were limitations in childhood. This boy is not that boy. This boy is a boy, not a girl. There's limitations right there. <laughs> All right? Prowers change, different from others, and so on. Abilities are changing, you know, different from others also. And then he changed. He was uh, disabled. He couldn't do a lot of things. Now all of a sudden, he was able to do things. The change took place. You know, 
couldn't ride a bicycle now. He was able to ride a bicycle. Okay, fine. All those changes took place, but they don't belong to you. They belong to what? To the Dehi. What is the Dehi? The body. The, you know, that's right. the, the, the indweller the dweller, of the body. This Dehi. The mind changed. The faculties changed. All these things changed. But you haven't changed. And then those things were supposed to change. Why? Because they're within time and space. They're ruled by time. But then, look at this, please. While all the changes were taking place, uh, they were all limited. Nit what is it called? Anitya. Nitya, you know, the word Nitya, what does Nitya mean? Nitya. Constant. Constant. Anitya. Moving. Not, not constant. Nitya means complete also. By itself. Complete. Anita. Anitya means what? Incomplete. Incomplete. Isn't it? And also has to do with Ananda. Look at this. All those changes were not enjoying Ananda as much. Because even growing is pains. <laughs> Isn't it? But you know what? There was one fullness. One constant. That's called Ananda. Anantam. Anantam is that a word? Mm -hmm. That Anantam. The limitless fullness. I am. I am the one that experienced all those. And I continue to be. And I will never say. As a matter of fact, before this body was, I am. While the body is going in different changes, I am. The I am is identity, is the same. And while the body is gone, I am. The body needs me. Just like the, the, clouds, the clouds need the ocean. But I give it, see, but I don't need the body. I don't need the body. I'm expressing as a body. But when the body expression manifests in hands, I don't change. That's what the Bhagavad Gita is talking about. That's what Arjuna needs to recognize too, because not knowing this brings about sorrow. That's what that's Arjuna's sorrow. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So as I say it's easy to recognize that who I am is constant. Nitya Chaitanya. Can is that the right word to say? Nitya Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. That constant present awareness. That's who I am. And that does not have any limits. That has no limits. And that's also, look at this please. It is not time bound. Time is because this awareness is. Time is in awareness. Space is in awareness. But awareness is not limited by time or space. You know how time is an awareness? You know how I mean by that? You know what time is, right? Time. Mm -hmm. Let's define time. Can we say time, time space? Let's just call it count together. It's a distance between two events. Can we define it as such? The distance between two events. The event could be very big, but the event could be very small, isn't it? Thought, thought, two thoughts, all right? A thought, and another thought comes. Now, this thought, let's say it took a long time, let's say uh, two seconds, okay? <laughs> but this thought and another thought, let me just say that. It, it don't happen like that, okay? This thought is not that thought. This is an event, it's another event. Now, look, look at this. And then the space between them and the time that goes between the thoughts, you're conscious of it. Of every thought and the distinguishing, the, 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 what distinguishes the thought, you're conscious of. And this thought is not this thought. Apple and pear are two thoughts. This thought is not that thought. Okay, apple came and then pear came. One is green, the other one is red. Okay, there's two thoughts. 
And, and you know, there's a distance between these two thoughts, isn't it? The first thought came apple, and then thought came, you know, of uh, fire came. And then red and then green, like that. 